Hey there, my name is Jessie Smith and I work as an employer brand specialist here at UiPath. Experimenting is a part of our culture, so we decided to create a series of podcasts where we interview different employees to find out who they are, what projects they're tackling, and why they choose to work at UiPath. I was really honored to speak with our next guest and I hope you enjoy listening. Hey everyone, welcome to the podcast. I'd like to welcome Ted Cummert. UiPath's new Executive Vice President of Product and Engineering. Before we kind of get into it, a little bit of background about Ted. He spent about 23 years at Microsoft, many of those years as a Corporate Vice President of many different divisions. He then went to work for Aptio for quite a while, and then most recently at Madrona Venture Group. Um, And now he's here at UiPath, so welcome, Ted. Thank you, it's great to be here. Yeah, thank you. So kind of just to start it out, I want to kind of take a deep dive into Madrona Venture Group. Um, And for those of the people that are listening that don't know, um, what exactly does Madrona Venture Group do? Well, thanks. So just as background, I've spent most of my career uh, as an engineer and then leading products and engineering organizations. And like you you said, I spent most of my career at Microsoft, got to lead some amazing teams and businesses there. Uh, and then I also had the opportunity to work in the growth stage uh, with a company, the Win IPO, which was Aptio, leading products and engineering. And so all that time as an operator, I got to a point both in my professional and personal life where I was I was interested in doing something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my personal life, my youngest was a high school senior and two sport athlete. I thought this would be a great time for me to be able to see all his games in a year. And uh, and uh, so I wanted a different kind of role uh, for a while. And then I also wanted the opportunity to explore a whole other part of the industry that I had not seen before. And going to a venture capital firm like Madrona was just perfect for that. Yeah. Uh, Madrona is an early stage venture capital firm. Uh, they help uh, grow companies. Mm-hmm. They help companies grow by providing them capital and they grow companies by helping them, uh, coaching them along the way as board members and coaches. They talk about being there at the day one when a company is formed and for the long run, taking them all the way through uh, wherever they head as a company, which could be as a standalone public company. Take some place like Aptio or, or Smartsheet, one of their you know, great success stories. And what I was there to do, and there's a few of these people around there, uh, was I was there to bring my experience as an operator to help the firm. And the firm really does a couple of different things. It makes investment decisions and it helps companies grow. And I was there to advise on both of those. So I could spend my time advising on potential deals. Companies need investment capital and they are coming in to propose their business to us for us to make a decision about it. So helping in that process. And then once we made an investment working, especially with the product and engineering executives to coach and provide feedback and mentorship as they as they continue to grow a super opportunity to get just a wide purview on the industry and everything's going on. I still feel so privileged to spend you know, that time just immersed in so many great businesses and get to meet so many fantastic entrepreneurs that are passionate about building the next generation of great companies in the Pacific Northwest. And so how do you, I'm just like curious, I mean, what kind of research are you doing? Like if someone, if you, what makes you want to invest in an idea versus another one? I mean, are you looking at market data? Is it a gut instinct? What ultimately makes you want to invest in one company versus another? Well, it's pretty simple, especially at the early stage. You know, you're, you are investing in people. Um, you know, fantastic people is the most important thing. And that's true of software businesses at any, at any size, but certainly at the early stage. And is this a founding team that you think is backable and can make this, you know, can make the journey happen. And then it is about a market. Um, it's about an idea, uh, how you can enter a market, how you can gain a foothold, and then a confidence in a team that they can continue on the path and to, to grow themselves. And uh, so it's, it's an understanding of all those dimensions. It's, it's uh, science, it's, and it's certainly a lot of art and judgment as well. Yeah. 
And then do you also help find organizations that might not have a CEO that can lead them to the next stage? Or what about companies that need to to take it a little bit further? Like, do you also help them with senior leadership? Well, you, uh, you know, is one of the ways you can help a company as an investor or just an advisor is you can help them understand where they need talent for the next phase of their business. And you can even help them, you can even help them uh, go find it. So that's certainly a point where, you know, a VC firm can add a lot of value is in just connecting companies to talent they need for the next phase of their, of their journey. Yeah, that makes sense. And so being at Madrona and seeing all of these companies basically start from the seed up, what made you want to come to UiPath ultimately? Yeah, it was a process. I <laughs> was, even before we invested, so Madrona is an investor in UiPath. Right. I had, an, let's call it an intellectual and surface level understanding of the business. And I have to say, when it first showed up, I, I misunderstood it. Um, I saw an automation platform, but I saw mostly desktop automation. Mm -hmm. And it's as I got to know that then we made the investment decision. And as part of that process, I started to understand uh, the potential of the broader platform idea. We call it hyper automation. You know, so what does our platform do? Uh, a platform is something that helps you kind of automate the, the processes uh, in your enterprise. And there is a core part of that that involves automating application. That's that's very uh, important part of it is is we can help automate on top of your existing you know, applications. And that can be very helpful for all kinds of workers. Uh, but the power is even bigger than that as we start to think about uh, helping people discover what automations they can do. Um, and you know, by mining their processes, by observing the tasks people do, using techniques like machine learning to understand that and identify opportunities for you know, automation with an enterprise so we can help with discovery, which increases the amount of automations you can apply. There's lots of places we can apply technologies to increase the power of these automations, like machine learning and artificial intelligence. You know, there's things we do in the core of our automation platform, like computer vision, which enable us to automate a wider category of autom of applications on other kinds of platforms, whether it's recognizing data in documents and helping that be ex extracted. Um, or, as I mentioned, things like mining uh, data to understand repetitive tasks and opportunities for automation. So there's this potential to use you know, AI and ML technologies really to power these you know, automations to the next level. And other things we've been trying to do, obviously, are to increase the simplicity. So not only can a developer you know, use our technologies to automate tasks, but we can empower uh, a less technically sophisticated user, a citizen developer, to develop these same things. So we can get more creators, more automations are running, more people, more people creating them, lower the, lower the technical skills required to do that. And then we can help you measure it all. You know, you, you, you've invested in our platform. You've now got all these automations. Well, is it paying off? And we can do that by, you know, applying analytics and other types of reasoning over it to help you really understand the potential of the things you want to do and the effectiveness of the things that you are doing. And this is an, just an amazingly powerful platform. And I, and I came to really understand it as one of the most, what I believe will be one of the most significant platforms of this era uh, will be this, this automation platform. Mm, yeah. And I also have to say, as a person who is less technical, <laughs> I've definitely benefited from UiPath um, and using our own technology and really understanding how easy it is to create a simple bot to help with your day-to-day -day nuances that you just don't want to have to deal with anymore. So, Like, like a lot of things, there's, fast, there's other ways to do this. Mm-hmm. But are there ways that are as fast for you to do that? And we certainly see a lot of that in our customers and 
nothing like the era we're in now in this kind of COVID and pandemic era. We've, we've seen the need for our technology and its value and really the rapid deployment and development and deployment of new automation capability. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen real applications in healthcare. They're trying to automate new things. Mm -hmm. And we're just an incredibly fast way to go develop and deploy those new types of automations. Uh, it's not that you couldn't do them another way. You couldn't do them by, you know, tradition, more traditional integration using just APIs. You could, but it's not as fast as, as our ability. So we can get you there fast and provide, you know, this true end-to-end -end automation. And that's, that's really powerful. With all this changing climate and, you know, obviously there's a ton of unknown, um, how do you think RPA in general is positioned in the market pay place? Do you think it's something that can continue to thrive in this sort of unknown future that we're headed into? Well, I don't, you know, generally I'd say uh, cost and efficiency never goes out of style. Mm. And certainly when you're in a more challenging period, if you're a tool that can help drive efficiency and you can help decrease costs, uh, you are an important tool in that era. And I see RPA and the UiPath platform is directly in the, in the heart of that, where companies are all dealing with challenges is, you know, in, you know tech, whether you're a technology company or not, you've got people who, you may have people now who are offsite who need to do a lot of the same work, uh, you know, you were doing before and, and, and an automation can potentially help you with that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we are well positioned, you know, we were well positioned before, I think well positioned uh, going through this period uh, because of the type of work uh, that our platform can do for customers. Yeah, yeah, that absolutely makes sense. And then I guess in terms of like the products that we already offer to our clients, I mean, where do you see our he products heading in the next couple years? Are there any innovations that you're able to kind of talk about that might be emerging? Well, we, we've got a few key investments. So we're continuing to build out that end-to-end -end platform I talked about from discovery uh, through to measurement uh, and everything in between. And uh, we are doing that uh, on premises and we are also doing that in the cloud. And we are making a big investment in the delivery of all those same capabilities in the cloud as well as, as on premises. Um, there we're making, you know, we, one of the great things about this is that we have almost every kind of software problem somewhere. You know, if you want to work on, you know, distributed systems, you want to, you're a full stack developer, you want to work on compelling front end, you want to problems and interesting build, build compelling UX for our users, you want to work on, you know, AI and ML and its application, you want to work on the platforms that support that, or you want to work on your data science and you want to work on forward looking problems and where we can apply machine learning. We have some of everything almost everywhere. Um, and we're a pretty diverse organization in terms of our footprint, you know, in Bellevue, in Bucharest, in Bangalore as big centers, and then some smaller uh, centers around the world. So we have a lot, a lot of opportunities for the place to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. And then kind of speaking of just about how many opportunities there are, I mean, I know why I chose to come to UiPath and continue to work here, but what would you say to maybe a new grad, a new software engineering student um, that is thinking about coming here versus, you know, a big tech giant? Like, what are some of the skills that they can learn here? Like, why should they choose UiPath? Well, I'll, I'll give you some of my my thinking just from my own perspective. You know, I'm, uh, you know, I I wanted to work at a, an enterprise company, um, and one of the things I love about working on enterprise products and platforms is how the 
it's just so energizing to go across all these different industries and talk to all these different customers and think about how your software can help all of them move forward. You get you get in touch with so many different ways of thinking about business and problems and then think about applying and building a horizontal platform for it. And as I said, I believe this is one of the most uh, important platforms of this time. And I've never quite experienced something where, you know, you talk to customers and the amazing things it's doing, that just the palpable enthusiasm for what we do just gives you a lot of a lot of confidence. And then the numbers behind it speak for themselves, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, where we are in terms of growth and the scale and, you know, that that. Um, you know, so you, you get the benefits of looking at UiPath and say, uh, you know, I've got an agility of a smaller company in the scale of what's becoming a much bigger company. Uh, and so that, that gives me a real balance of being able to go somewhere and, and, and join an organization where there's lots of people to learn from. There's amazing growth and amazing breadth of problems. Um, and maybe I'm not ready for the risk of an earlier stage company. Uh, but I want to do that in a place that's got some agility and some, some things that, re that that are really important to me. Uh, and I think that's what we offer is we're we're a great trade off in the middle of, you know, between deciding to go very early or go to a very large company with the benefits, I believe, of both. And like I said, we have no lack of uh, problem for you to go work on. Um, and so if you if if full stack type work is what energizes you that's great if it's if it's front end if it's data science uh if it's more platform oriented if it's more application and uh you know tool oriented uh we have it all and we're delivering it in the cloud uh as well yeah i used to be a recruiter at uipath but i've also hired a lot of you know sui ones and sui twos that worked really hard and showed initiative and they moved on to the ML side. And so that's the other nice thing too, I think, is that, you know, there's opportunity for discovering other types of work and different departments that might intrigue someone who is young that is still kind of figuring out like what exactly they want to really focus their career on. And UiPath kind of allows for some of that discovery. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that first job is just the first place you start. There's lots yeah. of opportunities to go into other teams and work on other parts of learn other aspects of, you know, technology. There's tons of opportunity. Awesome. So, Ted, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, besides being our executive vice president, I mean, I'm sure I do and a lot of other listeners want to know just kind of who you are as a as a person. Well, yeah, so I'm Seattle born, born and raised, um, actually just raised. I was born somewhere else, but moved here when I was like 18 months old. So Seattle's most of, uh, you know, what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, and went to high school in Seattle, went to the UW. So I'm a, a proud Husky. And, um, you know, I've, I, uh, you know, make sure and make time to see the Husky football team whenever I can. Uh, have a long tradition to go into home games. Uh, and, um, you know, I, out of college, I was an engineering grad, and that's what began my career that, that's led me to, to here. Uh, I'm married. I have uh, three boys. Um, actually, calling them boys is probably not accurate. <laughs> um, the two are older or out of the house, both work in the tech industry are both married and my youngest is also on his way looks to be to be in the tech industry he's a sophomore in computer science at santa clara university um aside with watching loving husky sports um, i'm a big soccer fan uh, love the seattle sounders um, and then with my with whatever spare time's left i do love to exercise i love to run um, i i like uh food um, i like i like a good glass of wine every once mm -hmm. in a while and it just so happens like that exercise thing happens to help balance the the food <laughs> and the wine thing um but yeah that's that's a bit about me i love it yeah i'm i've become more of a a soccer fan because my boyfriend's obsessed we were actually in spain um and we were supposed to be there for the el clasico against barcelona and madrid but 
there was those riots happening, so it got canceled. So he was absolutely devastated, but definitely love uh, seeing the Sounders games, and it's really fun. A lot more engaging than other live sports, I would say. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we actually all the boys, not all of them live in the Seattle area anymore. We got all of them together to go to the MLS Cup last year when the, the Sounders competed for the championship. And uh, we also had the opportunity to see our first Premier League game uh, together in uh, in September of last year um, in London, which was just a fantastic experience. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I've, I've been to one myself uh, in London and I was 18 and it blew my mind i had no idea that sporting events yeah. could be like that yeah passion passion and sophistication like you haven't seen anywhere else watching soccer yes in my opinion all right well ted thank you so much for taking time uh, to speak with me it was really i feel really grateful to hear your insights about ui path and i hope you stay safe and healthy thanks yeah it was fun all right Thanks for listening, everyone. We are continuing to record and publish podcasts, so stay tuned for the next episode. In the meantime, we also have a blog called Inside the Rocket Ship, where we feature different humans of UiPath and take a deeper look into our technology. So remember to stay safe, and we'll see you next time on Inside the Rocket Ship podcast.